Hi, I'm Oliver Goodbrot, an authorized Qt trainer from EGITS. Welcome to this learning video based on material taken from the Qt Essentials training course. With these videos, we will be giving you the key insights into Qt as well as demonstrate the type of in-depth training available in the classroom-based Qt Essentials training course. So let's take a look how to show some simple data using model view. Let's take a look at the Q-standard item model, which is a convenient model. The so Q-standard item model combines the model and the data, which we have seen on the previous slide. So this is the classic item-based approach and only practical for a small set of data. So let's take a look at the source code here. We first create a new QStandard item model and then we create some items and we append these items to our main model. And the result you will see on the right side that we have the item A and B into our data model. So the item C is not visible because the table view is only showing two-dimensional data. How can we react on a click for instance? So we simply connect the view signal clicked with a given model index to a specific slot. So and within the slot we can just get the item based on this unique index. So further information is available in QStandard item model documentation. How can we share the selection among the models? So we first create a model and then we create several views based on the same model. For instance, a list, a table and a tree showing the same data. And then we can share the selection by just setting the same selection model to the tree. And then we can share the selection by just setting the same selection model to the list and the table. So all the three views will use the selection model of the tree. So let's just do some further customizing. We can customize the view headers by setting the horizontal headers, for example. And here is the sample code on how to set a horizontal header item, which we name column one and two and we just hide the vertical headers. Then we can customize the items. So every item has its own flags where we can, for instance, make it editable or checkable, which means a checkbox will appear on the view. So customizing the selection behavior, we can set the selection behavior to select different rows or columns and we can set the selection mode if we want to have a single selection or a multiple selection and there are further modes available which you can read in Qt Assistant. So let's take a deeper look into the selections. Therefore we have the Q item selection model which keeps track of selected items in the view. So keep in mind that Q item selection model is not a Q abstract item model. It's just a Q object. The Q item selection model API has functions to get the current index and it also gives you the signal when the current item changed and it gives you a lot of further information about the selection state. You can call the select functions whenever you would like to select some new items. And the selection change signal will give you the information about new selected or new deselected items. So the selection 
is always a range from the top left to the bottom right. So you can select multiple items at once. In the classroom-based training course, we would now do the first lab exercise. So in this video, I will just show you a brief overview about this lab exercise. So therefore, we will first meet the city engine. The city engine is just a demo model, which gives us the 62 most popular cities of the world. So the data is available as CSV file and the city engine will just read the CSV file and gives us some API functions how to get this data. So let's have a look at the city engine API. For instance, we have functions to get the city names, the countries, the population, the area and some further information about the cities. So in the lab exercise we would normally learn how to create the tree model and how to display the city group by countries and an optional task would be to provide a find field for the country and the found countries should be selected. So let's take a look at the source code. So the task was to implement the setup tree model. So let's have a look at the function. So first we will ask the city engine to give us a list of all the available countries. Then we create some header labels. So to have the country and city, the population and the area columns available. And then we populate the model so for each country, we just fill the information into our model. So we ask the city engine about the flag and we ask the engine to give all the cities for a specific country and then we fill everything into the model by calling the append row function. So let's take a look how this looks when we run it. So here is the result. We will have the list of all the countries And when we expand the country, we will see all the cities within this country. So an optional task was to implement the find. So whenever we enter some string here, all the found countries are selected within our tree. So how does this work in the source code? So whenever the user enters a find string, we will have the onFind change slot invoked. And then we can ask the model to find some items. And with the result of the found items, we just go to the selection model and select them. So, with this example, you see how easy it is to implement a model based on a custom data backend API. We hope you enjoyed this session of our Qt Essentials training. For the full experience, including labs, Q&As and additional info, we recommend you to attend the full multi-day Qt Essentials training course available from EGITS or any one of the Qt training partners. 
For full details, check out cute.nokia.com. Thanks for watching.